Chris was 35 and he looked like many fraudsters, which was unremarkable. When he first got his CMA degree, he thought it would be interesting and easy to help others increase their worth and statue in the world, and maybe his along the way. Chris was hired by a local firm and started out at the bottom as other have in the past. He was able to see how the business was run and got to be very proficient at managing the books and from there he learned how to predict what clients would want to do with their lives to make more money and better their life in retirement. He started out by doing the basic record keeping of the firm he was employed by. After a few years of looking at all the potential that was out there he started to think that he needed to get into helping others make the decisions that they need to make to fulfill their retirement life. He later got a start from a friend who wanted some advice. He steered them to his firm from there the boss told him, since you found this client, you can handle the client as you see fit. He was warned that the reputation of the firm was always his number one goal. He was determined to give the new client his utmost attention and get them his best ideas to invest and save money for their future. Of course he would get a small bonus for his efforts. He relied upon his bookkeeping skills understood that he would be placed in complete control of the client's money that they had set aside to invest in their future. With this, he wanted to impress his boss and show the best course for return on investment. He compiled a portfolio of companies that he could invest a portion of the client's money into that showed a great potential of increasing the savings for them. He was given the green light to pursue the investment strategy that he has outlined in his proposal. He knew that he had a dozen years before the client would want to access their money, so he found some long-term investments. He saw these investments grow over time and as he saw this he wanted in on some of this. He devised a way that he could grab a few pennies at first off the client's gains. He kept the books and saw that he could write off a few small losses where they were in fact small gains. He pocketed the gains and with his managing the books for this account, he was able to hide his gains in the client's losses. With this, he was able to show the boss that he was good at getting his client a good return on his investment and with that good profit, they never saw the losses that was pocketed by him. He just saved a few dollars off that client for himself, but showed them as a loss and transferred the small amounts as cost of doing business. His cost of doing business. As time went on, he was given more clients to handle. He thought that in his first client went well, he can do the same again with other clients that were sent his way. In the months ahead, he was pocking a few thousand dollars per month into his own accounts, but hidden in the books as losses of the clients. He found what he thought was a great gig for him. He then was approached by his boss for doing a great job for the company that he was going to give in his own division as the company expanded. He was given rules to follow in the new division and that was do give a percentage of the gains to the boss as well. With this rules he saw that the boss was basically doing the same thing he was doing, but the boss called it a fee for doing business with the company. As he was promoted to a new company site located in a richer side of the country, he was able to secure more profitable deals for the company. As time went on, he was investing in regular stocks for the clients and each time he skimmed off a little for himself and adjusted the books for that client as time went on, both the client and himself did very good. He also added some for his boss as a fee for doing business with the company. Most of the clients did great and got a lot of money in time, so everyone was happy and no one ever noticed the losses, and even if they did, the books showed them as a small loss, which was to be expected in a business like the was doing for the client. Down the road, he was looking at the personal account and saw that it was growing to a point that he could not manage to hide it within the company without raising suspicion. He needed to transfer the money he had gotten and had to do that in a way that would not be caught. In his search to find a shelter for his money, he found a vice president of a local bank. With his connection over time, he was able to get the old dirty money he had gotten from skimming off the clients into new fresh money through the banking system. He knew this connection would take time to come to the point he could trust the system. He knew nothing about converting dirty money to clean money. He only knew it was called money laundering. Upon his time in his new division, he had spent 20 years accruing skimmed money from his clients and his firm. He had amassed a great amount of money in these years and keeping it in the company books was getting too close to being caught for him. 
he had to make his move and it had to be done soon he thought. By this time, he has over $750,000 on the books and in the corporate bank account. At the same time, he had amassed a cool $500,000 for the firm as well and kept that in an account that only the company owner knew about. He knew that he had to start funneling it off the account, but now a new problem arises. He knew he could not pull it out at once or it will be noticed. Since it was in a slush fund, it was safe for now, but as the fund grew, so did the chance of getting caught. This is where he needed his new banking connection. His new banking connection then started to funnel the money he gave to her at the bank, to convert that into real estate property overseas. They held on to that for a few years and then sold that property off for an increase in profit. Once that was sold off, they transferred the money to a trust fund. They used the trust fund to take advantage of the stepped-up basis rule in the tax law. He wanted to transfer appreciated assets to the trust beneficiaries without having to pay the capital gains tax. He was okay with paying the basis in an asset since it was the price he paid for the asset, in this case, the property value. He kept skimming off the top of his clients in a manner they never knew because the books always showed it was either a commissioned fee or a loss on the investment. This went on for many more years until he decided enough was enough. When he wanted to terminate the agreement and stop working for the firm, he was approached by the company to hand over the records of the past years of work he had done. He refused to hand over all the reports because he was afraid that he would be uncovered and get caught. He knew that if the company wanted all the records and he refused to hand over all of them that he could then turn in the company for mishandling the accounts as well that he skimmed off for the company as well. This hushed up the company and they did not pursue the act to uncover all his mishandling of the accounts. He was let go from the firm on a mutual agreement. Later, he married the banking executive and they created the family trust out of the trust he originally created to cover up the money proceeds. Together, they both started to invest the money into different investment opportunities and getting rich off them. By the time they were old, they wanted to stop doing this type of work and just focus on life. She started a charity to funnel some money into. She did this to ease her mind over what wrong they had done over the years. He was still investing in the stock market on tips and high return stocks. Over the years, he has amassed over 5 million in stocks alone and used the dividends as everyday to day expenses. He figured the interest alone on the 5 million dollars on the investments accounts will last them for the rest of their lives. His trust fund is now worth over $11 million and now since he has stopped doing this work, he only dabbles a little in the stock market. This is enough to make his life easy, but he never has an easy life. With his guilt, he never enjoys his booty and acts as a poor old man. He clips coupons or anything he can to save money. Everyone who knows him now calls him stingy and does not know the whole story behind him. He has stated that he too wishes all his money to go to charity as to repay his guilt for all his bad actions in the past. He has gotten away with this money skimming for 50 years. Now he is 85 and still to this day he is a hermit and looks over his shoulder thinking they will someday catch him or close in on him. He tried very hard to cover his tracks from day one in his long career of working with the clients. He will never share anything with his friends as for he does not have family. Chris stated it would have been easier if he'd just been a banker and skimmed one penny off every direct payroll deposit. He though no one would ever miss one penny every two weeks. That would have been much more money. What good is all this if he never enjoyed it nor ever have fun with anything, just recluse himself and never spend anything? This is taking it to your grave a reality. We hope that you enjoyed our podcast for today. We will be back next week with an all-new True Crime Tales. Please subscribe and return for our next episode.